Let's go to Nancy on Capitol Hill. So, Nancy, this debate goes well into the night last night, but it was kind of a foregone conclusion, wasn't it? I mean, the Democrats were backed up here. That's right. Uh, the Democrats were howling when this deal was first announced between the White House and Republicans, but everyone assumed that at the end of the day, most, if not all of them, would end up getting on board because the alternative was just so severe that everyone would see their taxes go up in a matter of weeks. We saw pictures of Speaker Pelosi standing there in the well. This had to be kind of a bittersweet end. I mean, the, the session's not over, but this was kind of the last big deal there. That's right. She was not happy with the way that this deal was worked out. Basically, uh, they went right around House Democrats, uh, the White House negotiating directly with Republicans. So she was sort of cut out of the process. She didn't even know that the deal was going to be announced. And then she didn't like what was in it. She didn't like the fact that uh, the tax cuts were extended for everyone, including upper income Americans. She didn't like this payroll tax deal. She hated the fact that estate taxes were going to be dropped. Uh, she said that that only benefited about 6,600 families in this country. So no, no, she didn't like the outcome, and it is kind of a, a, a sad way for her to go out, I'm sure she's thinking. Uh, Nancy, hang on just for a second. Let me bring in Jill Schlesinger now in, in New York at Money Watch. Joe, I apologize. I kind of botched your name there. I apologize. Uh, That's but, quite all right. But more importantly, though, who are the winners here? I mean, will this deal uh, do any good in terms of stimulus, or will this just add to the deficit? What is your, what is your take on that? Well, you know, it's going to cost about $858 billion. Of that amount, when I speak to economists, they say about 200 to $250 billion will really act as stimulus. In other words, we could see up to another 1% growth next year in the economy as a result of this tax cut deal. So that is good for the economy, especially if we're only kind of limping along at about 2.5%. However, there are clear winners and losers, and obviously the wealthiest are the biggest winners because it's really not the estate tax that's the big one as far as I'm concerned. It's the capital gains and dividends. Those folks who are investors get a huge deal on that. People really getting the, uh, any, the, the payroll tax deduction. And I think that what you may not even remember is we, a lot of these people were thinking that their whole tax rate was going to go up as of the first of the year. Their tax rates are frozen. So the wealthiest Americans definitely get the best of this deal. It doesn't mean that others are left out, but they get the best. Is there a psychological advantage for people knowing that the tax rates now will stay frozen at least for for two years? Does that uh, let people loosen the purse strings a bit and maybe make the purchase they've been deferring? Well, I'm not sure it does so much with the wealthy. Based on a lot of analysis, what we know is actually the, stimulus, the stimulative part of the plan really occurs in the middle class. So when you get a child care tax cut or a dependent care tax cut, or when you get a little bit extra money in your paycheck every week, you spend more. So again, a family that earns $50,000 in this economy is going to have an extra $1,000 because of that payroll tax deduction. Those are the folks who are likely to spend the money. In addition, those who get unemployment benefits, those are the dollars that are usually recycled most quickly in the economy. So I think that's the real crux of the stimulative part of the bill. So can this, uh, can this bill be paid for with whatever kind of stimulus we get, or that's just no way to know that yet? Uh, well, the, uh, the idea that it's going to be paid for is really thrown out the window. This just kind of ratchets up the debt, and we're going to really be facing something pretty significant in the order of around $14 trillion of national debt. That's what that deficit commission was meeting about. That's going to have to be addressed. We kicked the can down the road on that one, and we're going to pay for it at some point. All right, Jill, I'll stand by just for a second. Nancy, on the point of kicking it down the road, now, if, if my math is right, this means Congress revisits this in 2012. That's an election year. That is an election year, Bob, which is why Democrats who didn't like this bill say, look, we're going to be in even worse shape uh, in, in terms of negotiating then than we are now. It's going to be an election year. Republicans will control the House. They'll have far more seats in the Senate. And so this will come up not just in two years, even before that, because th if these taxes run out in two years, they're going to have to start talking about it uh, in about a year and a half. So there won't be much of a break. And you'll also see Democrats try to bring this issue up sooner this time than they did the last time because they're realizing that that was one of the mistakes that they made. They waited until the last minute until these taxes were just about to run out before they tried to make a deal and they realized that they didn't have any of the bargaining power that they needed to get what they wanted. And ultimately the Republicans still would like to see these tax cuts be made 
permanent. That's going to be the strategy? Absolutely. Republicans will be arguing that these should be made permanent, that they should have been made permanent this time. They do see this as a victory. They at least got them extended for everyone for two years. They didn't think at the beginning that this was a fight that they were going to win. So yes, in two years, they will definitely be pushing in an election year to extend these tax cuts for everyone. And, and one more point, Nancy. What about this uh, omnibus spending bill that had all the earmarks attached? All of a sudden, that's pulled from, from the floor. What's going on with that? Well, basically, these are earmarks that were added by Republicans and Democrats earlier in the year before the elections, before the Tea Party really put the screws to Republicans when it came to earmarks, before Republicans in the Senate came out and said, OK, we are going to make an earmark moratorium. We're going to take a stand. We are not going to ask for any more earmarks. Of course, they weren't referring to the earmarks that they had already asked for. They were looking forward to those going through. But when Harry Reid brought this bill to the floor, which would fund the government throughout the next year with all those earmarks attached, it it, it did bring up uh, calls of hypocrisy on part of the Tea Party. Uh, it, it was putting the heat on Republicans. So all the Republicans who had initially planned to support this omnibus bill turned their backs on it, and Harry Reid had no choice but to pull it from the floor because he was not going to get the votes they need. So now they're going to have to fund the government temporarily with just kind of a patch for the next couple of months, and they'll have to look for something more long-term when they get back. And, Jill, one quick question on, on earmarks. I mean, it, it makes for great political theater. There's a lot of hay that's thrown around about that. Does that make any real difference? What's the impact of earmarks in terms of the deficit? It's teeny tiny. It's less than 1%. And what the real conversation is going to have to be is exactly what the Deficit Commission brought up. How is the country going to structurally reduce its debt? And the first place that you got to look are the biggest programs, the entitlements. So we're going to have to look at Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. And we're also going to have to look at raising taxes for everyone. So while I totally agree with Nancy in that, you know, it's going to be a great selling point for the Republicans to say, let's keep tax cuts in place and keep these rates at these levels, if you do the math, it's really hard to make this country run without raising taxes. There aren't enough rich people just to raise the taxes on. And it appears from what all economists are looking at the same numbers that everybody's taxes are going to go have to go up. And that's going to be a necessary component of reducing the national debt. All right. Jill Schlesinger from Money Watch and Nancy Cordes on the Hill. Thanks to both of you for joining us today. Sure thing. Thank you.